guys, welcome back to my channel. One of the most important aspects when widening your wind range and getting effortless speed is learning how to get lift from your fin. So I've already made two videos um, of everything you need to know about slalom fins. Um, you can check out the link, I'll put it up here for you. After that video, I got quite a few people who asked me exactly what I refer to when I talk about lift. Um, I think that there was quite a few people who um, had the idea that getting lift is being able to go upwind. But that's not what lift refers to. So I found this um, thing from my husband's garage. Um, it looks like a piece of saw. Um, so I will try and explain to you guys what I refer to um, with lift. So just pretend that this is the fin under the water. When you are sailing, um, and I'm sailing basically towards you guys, and the wind is coming from this side, what happens to the fin under the water is that as you put pressure against the board on the back, the fin bends under the water in this direction. I think that there is some videos on YouTube that actually shows how the fin bends when you are actually sailing. Um, it's quite fascinating to see. Under the water, your fin does not look like straight. It actually bends under the water. And this is why it is so important to choose the right stiffness fin because the more stiff a fin is, the less bendage it will have. And the more this fin bends, the more lift you will get. So as you sail forward and you push against the fin to get lift, the fin bends. And also this is why when you rail the board, you get more lift. So railing the board means when you point your feet in the downwind directions. Because when you point the board in the downwind direction and with the fin bent in this position, this effect will cause the board to lift out of the water due to that force. If you had to push your heels into the board, the board would be more in this angle. So this setup will push the board right down onto the water again, which will create a lot of drag, which you don't want to be in. So you don't want to press your heels down and have the board tilted like this. So this is why when you rail the board, this is what you want. Because that helps the board to then lift out that way, which is that feeling that you get. The moment you rail the board, you lift out and you basically glide over the chop. So that is what is referred to when I'm um, talking about generating lift out of the fin. A fin that is really stiff does have less ability to bend like this. So you will have less effortless lift, which is um, what I explained in my fin video. Whereas a fin that's really softer, bends easier, and you're able to generate more lift because of this action of the fin under the water. It has got its advantage and disadvantages. Um, check out that video. Um, I've explained in detail all the advantages and disadvantages and where you want your fin stiffness to be for your specific sailing needs. So this whole action of getting lift, generating lift through railing the board, it's an important skill to learn if you want to widen your wind range and to get the best performance out of your gear. The moment you learn how to rail your board, you will feel how the board lifts slightly out of the water. It's not 100% like foiling, but it is almost in the same sense that you are lifted off the water surface slightly. So you are missing out on all the ups and downs generated by the chop that can really um, impact your speed. So if you are gliding slightly above the chop, you go much faster and it's a smoother ride. It's more controllable. Um, you can lock in a position for longer. It is quite a bit of physical effort to rail the board and to keep it locked there and to generate lift. But if you've got amazing fins, it becomes effortless. And it's a very important aspect of widening your wind range and getting the best performance out of your gear. So this is exactly what I do when I'm on my 7 and I'm really underpowered and I don't have the 7.8 like at the moment. I put a lot of effort in railing the board to get gliding above the chop and to get flying through the lulls much easier. I don't want any reduction in speed because I'm already sailing slightly underpowered. Um, it's just to generate that lift over the chop and glide more effortlessly with less surface resistance from the water side. Some people say that they don't know when they are getting lift or not. They can't feel it. How do they feel the difference? If you um, practice this skill, so especially with your back foot, if you learn how to press onto the balls of your feet, your foot straps really need to be in the right tightness for this. 
it, it mustn't be too tight so that only your toes are stuck into the straps. You want it to be loose enough to put in a big section of your foot to give you that extra leverage in order to tilt the board and to rail it. To get that amount of degree of tilt so that you get lifted out of the water easily on the fin. And that is also why um, with slalom boards it's very beneficial to have the foot straps right on the outside of the board. It gives you that um, leverage to be able to stand against the board side and to tilt the board over like that. Some boards are more easier to rail than others for sure. For me the Isonic and the Fox so far it's been a breeze to be able to generate lift through railing the board. So when you are able to lift the board out of the water from the back, it helps to level out with the nose so that your board also doesn't stay in this angle. You would see on my Ludred Speed Challenge series where I explained how putting in a slightly bigger fin on the channel helped to level out the board so that it's exactly horizontal and not sailing like this, creating a lot of drag. If you see on my post on Facebook, um, our speed sailing experience at Faltriff that we had the other weekend, the fin that I had in was an asymmetrical Ludritz Edition speed fin because beforehand we thought that that is going to be the same direction um, channel as the Ludritz channel. But it turned out at the spot that it is actually the best to go the other way. So I was sailing literally upwind with the speed board in the correct direction for the asymmetrical fin. But coming down to make speed runs, I was sailing in the opposite direction which the speed fin is made for. And um, that created a ton of drag. So you'll see on the photos, my board is like constantly in this angle. I was not making high speeds. I had a lot of fun, but it is not ideal to have the board in this angle. If you have the right size fin in, you should get enough lift to lift out the tail of the board to level out the fin. And then to rail it in this angle over the chop through the gust and the laws. So it's all experiences. Even sailing sometimes the wrong way with gear helps because it teaches you how a big difference it makes to have the right stuff. So I will still make a video of our entire experience at Feltriff and the speed sailing that we did in that section of the West Coast. It's quite a magical spot and I've learned quite a lot that day. So I would say generating lift changing the fin sizes, being sensitive on how you transfer your weight on the board, setting the out all and the down all. Those are things that are going to, skills that are going to take you a big step beyond the rest if you can master those skills um, in staying on the same gear in a wide range of windsurf conditions. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know if you've got any questions. I'm always super happy to help. This is the purpose of my channel. All my experiences and what I learn and to try different things. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook page as well. And subscribe to my channel to stay up to date for all the coming videos.